But the other one, Mama Yariga, is also a, 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 an officer of the court. And, He's and senior to all of us, so who knows? And, and yeah. senior to all of you, mm. lawyers here on this platform. Yes. Now, having listened to this particular issue about, there was a specific declaration by the Speaker as to why service had been agreed to be done on a particular day. And I understand the background and foundation for that was previous instances where officers of the court would accost speakers of parliament, I mean, that's the members of parliament, even on their way to parliament in their homes and so on, and then they would have to tell them that they are going to do parliamentary business and so on. What was the basis for this particular conclave and, and, and what Vincent Asifua is talking about, that it can be set aside because of a particular situation? Well, thank you very much. Um, I have listened uh, patiently to my two colleague lawyers, as they banter, and then my colleague member of parliament. I think that if you give me the permission, I probably will not spend too much time on this simple question mm -hmm. because it is anchored on Article 117. Excellent. of the Constitution of Ghana. And the article says, civil or criminal process coming from any court, I repeat, any court, I repeat again, any court or place out of parliament shall not be served on or executed in relation to the speaker or a member or the clerk to parliament while he is on his way to attending at or returning from any proceedings of parliament. So article 117 is very clear that once parliament is in process, once a member is on his way to parliament, is attending at parliament, on his way from parliament, the clerk of parliament, the speaker of parliament, you cannot serve any process on any of them. The constitution is very clear on that matter. Mm -hmm. So the issue that came up on Tuesday was that a filmmaking tried to serve and we are told that the officials at parliament rejected the service. And he came to the floor, and when um, the then minority leader raised the issue, and he rose to speak and comment, he then drew attention to an application that he had brought before the Supreme Court, and how he had attempted to serve that, and how the officials in Parliament were refusing service then he attempted to lay it and make it part of the records of parliament. And the speaker rejected that effort and insisted that he, the speaker, had come to an understanding with the chief justice that to manage the challenges posed by Article 117, to manage the challenges posed by Article 117. Otherwise, they couldn't have served him anyway. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Supreme Court should have known that the service was wrong. Mm -hmm. If really, we are going to go by the Constitution mm -hmm. and not the rules of court. The rules of court are subsidiary to the Constitution, mm -hmm. subordinate to the Constitution. I get the situation. So the Speaker said to have some amicable understanding with the judiciary on how to manage the challenges of seven parliamentarians. So it doesn't look like parliamentarians are above the law. Are you getting the situation? Mm -hmm. I have made some concessions and we've agreed that on Mondays we don't sit. So every process that they want to serve should be served on Monday. Okay? If that is the understanding with the, the Chief Justice and practice directives have been issued to that effect, then it would have required that if they were going to serve again and it wasn't a Monday, there had to be substituted service yes. or some service based on a directive of the court, that even though this is the understanding and the practice direction, is that okay? We are making an exception that go and serve them on this date or that other date. Mm -hmm. That is a very simple 
thing that should have happened. But like I said, for me, service, no service, whatever happened, I am scandalized. I am sad. And I'm sad because I'm one of those who sat as a member of the appointments committee and processed these people to sit as Supreme Court judges, some of them. Maybe not all of them, maybe one or two of them, I wasn't part, but some of them. And I thought that when they came, they committed themselves to interpret and enforce our constitution. And I assumed that they understood the constitution. I assumed. Why do I say so? If you listen to the ruling, I didn't listen, but then I got a copy of the ruling. Mm -hmm. If you read the, copy, the ruling, you see that they are saying that the matter before them is a human rights matter. I don't know if you have read it. Mm -hmm. They say it's a human rights matter and the rights of the people of these four constituencies to be represented. Is that okay? Yeah. And the rights of the MPs to represent those people. That's what they say. That it is about the representation of those mm -hmm. constituencies and the rights of the MPs to represent those constituencies. So yeah. essentially, the Supreme Court is saying that it is a human rights matter that is before them. Mm. It's a human rights matter. And I ask myself very basic questions that a first-year constitutional law student will ask. If it is a human rights matter, whose right was violated? Was it Afonio Markin's right? Does Afonio Markin come from any of those constituencies? Is Afonio Markin one of the members of parliament? If he is not from that constituency, has his right to be represented been violated by anybody? If he is not one of the members of parliament, has his right to represent constituents been violated? So where is the locus of Afwe Maikin to be making an application in this has, matter? Well, he being the, the, the leader of the NPP caucus in parliament, suffice in that capacity of he being a party to this case. You see, if it is a human rights matter, the Supreme Court itself has no jurisdiction. Because Article 33 of the Constitution is clear on the protection of rights by the courts. And Article 33 says that where a person alleges that a provision of this Constitution on the fundamental human rights and freedoms has been or is being or is likely to be contravened in relation to him, then without prejudice to any other action that is lawfully available, which could be like going to the Human Rights Commission, etc., is that okay? Mm -hmm. That person may apply to the High Court for redress. Right. So if you are talking about human rights and the right of the people to be represented and the right of the MPs to represent their people, mm -hmm. strictly speaking, you go to the High Court. Say, hey, my right is being violated. So one, a free market has no locus because it's not his right that is being violated. He is not a representative of that, that, those constituencies. And he's not a, a, a constituent of any of the MPs. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court has no basis because you say it's a human right and that the right of the people to be represented is being violated and therefore that is what you are intervening to protect. And that the right of the MPs to represent their people is being violated and you are intervening to protect those rights. So the Supreme Court got it totally wrong. There's a simple issue. <coughs> I'm further scandalized because By what? when I read the judgment, the ruling mm -hmm. of the court and the orders, they say that the applicant says there will be chaos in this country. That there will be chaos in this country. That's what the Supreme Court says. That the business of government will be stalled and disrupted and the running of this country will be disrupted because members of the minority in parliament are likely to go and take over their position as the majority and restructure committees and etc. Mm -hmm. 
This is what the Supreme Court says. And that because of that, they are intervening to stop whatever is going to happen in Parliament. By reversing the decision of the Speaker, and by ordering that those four MPs should go back to Parliament. And I say I'm scandalized because I assumed that the people that are participated in processing and are proven to be Supreme Court judges understand the basic concept of the political doctrine question. The separation of powers. Yes, yeah, the political question doctrine of the Supreme Court of the United States. Where the United States Supreme Court in Baker and Carr in 1969 set the principle. And I always cite the U.S. because we are copying our constitutional jurisprudence from the U.S. Mm -hmm. The whole concept of separation of powers, are you getting the point? Yes. You know, and, and, and judicial review and etc. Mm -hmm. started from Marbury and Madison and etc. Mm -hmm. So we, we pick from their jurisprudence. In Baker and Carr, the Supreme Court in the U.S. was very, very clear that the political question doctrine does not allow the Supreme Court to hear cases that are within the province and discretions of the two political branches of government, which is the executive and the legislature. It is entirely within their discretion what they do politically. How, in the exercise of our functions in parliament, we prevent government from pursuing its business. It's not a business of the Supreme Court. We prevent government from, from pursuing its business by voting, by arguing, by applying our rules. If we apply our rules according to the rules, and in the process we prevent government from pursuing its agenda in the House, it's purely a political matter. How does the Supreme Court turn itself into a political organization to supervise the exercise of the political actions of political actors in the legislature? And they said it clearly. They said, read it. Read the ruling. They said that the MPs on the minority side are planning to reconstitute committee. Is that your business? So, yes, I think that's... Are you getting the point? Now, let me go to another matter which the Supreme Court said in giving its directive, that the MPs were not heard. That the MPs were not heard. By who? By Parliament? The MPs are members of Parliament and were obliged to be sitting in Parliament on the day they were debating the matter. The MPs, mm -hmm. they are members of Parliament. Mm -hmm. They were obliged to be sitting in Parliament the day we were debating the matter. Why were, not they, why, why were they not there? They were not there because they themselves know that they have violated the Constitution. They were not interested in the matter. Their issues had come up for debate and they were not interested. Why were they not interested? Because they knew very well that they themselves had engaged in the conduct that they engaged in. So how can the Supreme Court be interfering in the business of Parliament and telling us that the MPs were not heard? Because the MPs were not heard, they are cancelling it. Who says the MPs wanted to be heard? Who so, say, who, where have any of the MPs complained that they were not heard? They didn't want to be heard because they knew what they had done. So I am scandalized. I am shocked. I am totally disappointed that the Supreme Court will stoop as low as they went in this instance. They are governed by the Constitution. Indeed, I said it on FM yesterday that so far as I am concerned, the Supreme Court, constituted by these five judges, mm -hmm. had violated provisions of Article 115 and 122 of the Constitution, which provisions say that no one no one shall interfere with the proceedings of Parliament. Let me read it. No one shall interfere with the proceedings of Parliament. An act or omission which obstructs or impedes Parliament in the performance of its functions 
or which obstructs or impedes a member or officer of parliament in the discharge of his duties or affronts the dignity of parliament or which tends either directly or indirectly to produce that result is contempt of parliament. See. There are two, two, two constitutional bodies that have contempt powers. The courts and parliament. parliament. The courts, they say they can hold parliamentarians before them for contempt, mm -hmm. and they've done that with my colleague, Honorable Aine, if you recall, I get in the situation. Yes. Same way, parliament can also hold them before it for contempt, because the contempt powers are given to parliament, and what will constitute contempt in mm -hmm. some cases? Freedom, privileges, and immunities. There shall be freedom of speech, debate, and proceedings in Parliament, and that freedom shall not be impeached or questioned in any court. In any court, that freedom of proceedings of Parliament shall not be questioned or in, impeached in, any, in court. any court or place out of Parliament. I see. So, any court so or place out of court, even the Supreme Court. So if the court so should, so should, so should. let me let me let me let me land let me land. I am saying that what the court did on whatever Friday is absolutely absurd, both in terms of the process they use, because you have argued the, the, the whole issue of the process. I don't want to repeat that. The whole issue of process, I mean, how the speed with which they were able to convene and, and do the bidding of Afeo Makin, I mean, unbelievable. Afeo Makin, to be able to railroad the Supreme Court to act with such dispatch, Led by Joe when all the, all the chief imams and imams, mm -hmm. all the pastors, yes. Yes. all yes. the leaders, yes. all the religious groups have been begging the Supreme Court to take a decision in relation to the LGBTQ question. Human being sleeping with and parents. the Supreme Court mm. has refused to take a decision. They they don't have a and yet, Afeo Makin alone was able to get the Supreme Court. And that is why people must rethink and think carefully about December 7th and what they are going to do. One man. So, so I, I, am, I am shocked that Afeo Makin mm. The Supreme Court allowed itself for Asema Afeo Makin to, to, to railroad them, to, to, to hasten and, 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 and violate the Constitution and mutilate it in the manner that they did. Because there was no basis for what they did. There's no such agency. There's no emergency. And, and let me assure you that Tuesday is going to be an interesting day. Tuesday when Parliament resumes, it's going to be an interesting day. I'm serving notice. That Tuesday is going to be an interesting day. If you say it's going to be an interesting day, what should we expect? I say it is going to be an interesting day. There was something that you, you, you said earlier. So if the, the courts, based on the, the references you made, <laughs> should stay true, Honorable Yaga, to, to its original jurisprudence, the expectation is that the court's mandate in terms of any application brought before it now will have to be limited to determining the correctness by which or, or rather to to determine the, the propriety by which the the speaker exercises his mandate let That's me my... give you what the proper position of the constitution is yeah you see i, I i'm interested in constitutional law is that okay i'm interested you can go and ask my 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 lecturer Kofi Kumado in constitutional law. People say Harvard, Harvard. No, I didn't learn my constitutional law from Harvard. Yeah, I did constitutional law at Harvard. I got, you know, taught by one of the best Lawrence Tribe, who was uh, mm -hmm. uh, Al Gore's lawyer. In the, but for me, the foundation of my constitutional law comes from the teaching of Professor Kofi Kumado, who I'm very proud of as, as my lecturer. I always take my time and read the wording of the constitution. And I always ask lawyers, please pay attention because it is written in English. Is that okay? If the English raises doubts because of application to facts and circumstances, then we can deal with that. But the basic thing is that it is in English. Read Article 2. It says that a person who alleges B, any act or omission of any person 
is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this constitution may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. For a declaration to that effect. 2.2 two says, the Supreme Court shall, for the purposes of a declaration under clause 1 of this article, make such orders and give such directions as it may consider appropriate for giving effect or enabling effect to be given to the declaration so made. Giving effect. Enabling effect to be given to the declaration. So the first thing is, your mandate is not to interfere in the work of parliament and suspend their decisions. Pandas your mandate <coughs> is to declare whether or not what speaker did is in violation of Article 97 1G of the Constitution. Period. That's judicial review. So, so, That's so. judicial review. Are you getting the point? If you, so, if you so declare, then you can now make orders to give effect. But somebody comes to you and says, oh, Parliament sat, Parliament went through all these processes and then did some things and I think it's wrong. They say, no, 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 Parliament, please suspend your decision. Don't, don't, don't enforce it. Mm -hmm. uh, give me time to now take a, make a declaration. No, it doesn't, it's not ordinary land litigation like Kwebu has uh, tried to explain. Land litigation. And, this is a constitutional matter governed by the clear language of the Constitution because you don't take one clause, Article 2, and so I'm acting on Article 2. You must read Article 2 in relation to Article 115, in relation to Article 122, in relation to the entire chapter of the provision on the legislature and the powers of the legislature and the sovereignty of the legislature, though limited in the context of our political architecture, not like the British parliamentary sovereignty doctrine. Are you getting the point? Yes. Limited. So, so, so you must read the entire constitution. Not just speak Article 2 and then be running and say, oh, I'm, I'm interpreting the Constitution. Anytime I'm interpreting the Constitution, I have all the powers under this sun to treat Parliament like I'm treating an ordinary land litigant. Well, so, so in terms no, of it, so it doesn't in, work in, that way. So, so in terms of its own jurisdiction <laughs> and the jurisprudence, uh, 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 Mama Yaga, the Supreme Court is to cannot in any way determine the correctness of the speaker's interpretation of the law. They cannot do that. It is not within their no, to do that. They can inter no, no, it's not even... The speaker didn't interpret the constitution. Mm -hmm. The speaker acted. And that's Listen, another... the speaker acted on a provision of the constitution to enforce it. Are you getting the situation? Mm -hmm. And he was clear. He said, I'm not interpreting the constitution. I'm just enforcing a provision of the constitution it. as I understand it. Don't forget that every single one of us, the legislature, the judiciary and the executive, we first have to read the constitution and understand it the way we understand it and act. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So, INET in the process of enforcing the constitution is an interpretation in your mind of it as you read it. What, sure. should it, what does it say I should do? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. But the people with the final authority to interpret it are the Supreme Court. It's not that others don't have jurisdiction to interpret. You have to interpret before you can act on it. You interpret to understand it so that you can act on it. But then when your interpretation and action is challenged, then that becomes the province of the Supreme Court. So the, the, the speaker was not engaged in the process of interpreting. He was saying, look, uh, this is my understanding of my duty under the Constitution that when A leaves this party and goes to this party, he leaves this parliament. If he leaves this party and goes independent, he leaves this parliament. If he leaves independent and goes to this party, he leaves parliament. That is my understanding of it. So I am enforcing it. Now, you go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is supposed to say, well, you know, um, let's interpret one, um, uh, sorry, Article uh, 97 1G for you. This is what it actually means. Mm -hmm. At that point, we will all be bound by a decision of the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Now, the Supreme Court says that it is absurd for, for people not to have representation. Let me tell you that I mean, the, the people the, of SAL did not have representation for four years. The Supreme Court was not bothered. Mm. They were not bothered. Yeah. Are the people of SAL not human beings? Mm -hmm. And let me, let, me, let, me, let me say that, let me also add that if, if I think six months eh, mm -hmm. to elections, mm -hmm. is that okay? Yeah. A yeah. member of parliament resigns or dies or something of that sort. Three months. Three months to elections. Mm -hmm. 
the same constitution yes. does not allow us to hold a, Article one, one, two. A, a, an election. Yes. Yes. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So the constitution has itself created a situation and circumstances where it tolerates yeah. an arrangement where some people may not be represented in parliament. Yeah. I, so you cannot be crying more than the bereaved. Mm. You, the justice, cannot be crying more than the constitution itself. The constitution is clear that there are some circumstances where I, the constitution, permit that some people should not be represented in parliament. Oh my God, we have to leave us. But I ask this question based on the premise in this... Mm. The, the court ruling mm -hmm. yes, yesterday. There's a part, part, point E. It says, Exhibit B, the ruling on page 3, in doing so. Clearly, the Speaker of Parliament was usurping the original and exclusive jurisdiction of this honorable court, and he himself recognized this, as in his attempt or effect to try and interpret the constitution if you listen to the argument of of alexander fenno martin and and in fact it's in tandem with what the supreme court justices have captured in this particular decision his contention is that per the speaker's decision he sought to interpret the law and you had indicated clearly and we all listened to the speaker when when he was reading his decision that he did not seek to interpret the constitution but apply Article 97, uh, as the dictates are. And per the reading, as you put it, Article 97, per the details, is an authority that is, is vested in the Speaker as the ultimate presiding officer of, of, the, of the House, correct? Yes, yes, okay. exactly. So, so the Speaker has a mandate to take decisions by way of determining things that affect his mandate. Exactly. So what, what went wrong here? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme <laughs> Court struggling, struggling mm -hmm. uh, to make sense out of what didn't make sense. Struggling to make sense out of what didn't make sense. Because, you see, Afayo Makin, and people made mention of something, because I me mean, sometimes when a matter is so useless, I don't really even pay attention to the details of a useless affair. Mm -hmm. Why do I say so? I mean, I heard long before we even resumed. The affirmative was running to the Supreme Court to try and then injunct us mm -hmm. from stopping the Speaker from declaring the vacancy of those four seats. So if you recall, on the floor of the House, we argue that, but affirmative, you've run to the Supreme Court to injunct what has not yet occurred. Mm -hmm. You see, it amounts to asking okay. the Supreme Court to give an advisory opinion. Wait till the facts okay. Do you get it? When the facts okay, then you now go to the Supreme Court. But Haru now stands on the platform in Tamale and says, we will do this. We will take steps to make sure that the proper composition of the house prevails. Then you run to court. When we haven't resumed parliament, we haven't sat in the chamber, we haven't taken the steps to actually create the set of circumstances and facts that will give a basis for you to take legal action. So the question is, he now claims, and they are claiming that they attempted to serve us. Because see, mm -hmm. they, they are saying, the, judge, the judges themselves are saying mm -hmm. that there was an attempt to serve us. Yes. Which one? And that's what I said. So that's it, the must be, it must be, no, it must be, the, the ob original case that affair marking sought to institute when the facts had not arisen. Yes, that's, that, that's what I was pointing out to Asifua. So that you get to the point. The and thing. so mm -hmm. the Supreme Court should have told affair marking that this, your thing, you uh -huh. filed it on this date. And by that date, the facts that you are bringing and asking us to work on had not occurred. That is the point I was making to Asifua. Are you getting the situation? They are different. And this is the argument that we made in parliament that the matter hasn't arisen so i think mm. why are you running to court and why are you already holding an injunction and why are you seeking to save parliament mm. you know on a matter that has not arisen I, that's preemptive is that okay yeah. that's anticipatory and it is just legally it doesn't wrong mean I cannot save the process. so 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 basically those are the issues that i have to 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 okay. point to i think that this is the most flawed conduct by our our Supreme Court. 
and it is it is embarrassing. There are other matters which I won't say on air. I leave that to Tuesday, and uh, on Tuesday, when we get to the house, we will see what happens to the directive of the Supreme Court, and we will see whether parliamentarians, including myself, will also be drawing the attention of Parliament to Article One One Five and then One Two Two and its consequences or not. We're all acting based on the Constitution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not only the Supreme Court that is a body under the Constitution. No? Mm -hmm. Parliament is also a body under the Constitution. <laughs> and the Presidency is also a body under the Constitution. <laughs> we all have our powers and rights under the Constitution. <laughs> and we're all going to exercise those powers and rights under the Constitution. Yeah. Well, 